a stack of retro goodness arrived yesterday and I thought we should maybe take a look together. So I got the mouse for the A500 which should also work with Windows, Mac and Linux. We'll see about that. I wonder if it works with Geos on the C64 and the C64 Mini. I have the gamepad which definitely works with the C64 and I have the main attraction, the A500 Mini. Let's crack these open and uh, check them out. They're all separately backed. Don't think I will keep these bags because why should I? Don't get why there are bags in the first place. But I guess some um, sea creatures will happily die for that. So nice sturdy cardboard, not the cheap shit. Okay, it's just the wrong way around, but. Okay. Oh, this feels so tiny. I think it has these protectors on the bottom here. So if you get one, make sure to remove the protector because it doesn't slide too good if you leave the protector on. And as you can see, this is actually a laser mouse and not a classic ball mouse. And it has a USB connector and a very flimsy cable. I think I should get a real Amiga mouse just for size comparison. This is my hand bleached real Amiga mouse. As you can see, it's a bit smaller, not much. Yeah, they put in micro switches here, I think, which is much nicer than the classic tactile buttons they have here. It would be nice if it had a some kind of mouse wheel or some sensitive area here which you can scroll and this would be a real alternative to a real mouse. I mean it's not the most ergonomic but it would check out. Yeah so that is the mouse. There should be a second one in the A500 box. So we will just put that to the side for now. Next up we have the controller, no the gamepad, sorry. By the way, the mouse cost, I guess, 25 euros. Should be around the same in, in dollars and all the other currencies around the world. Okay, again, don't know why, but the box is, I think, the wrong way around. But okay, who cares? Here we have the gamepad, again USB, thicker cable, 1.8 meters tall or long. It says Retro Games Limited 2020 model RGL010 made in Chinesia. That feels pretty good, I have to say. Really nice gamepad. Don't know if I get cramped hands. Clicky. Yeah, we'll see in a minute how that works out. So this can only be had in a grayish or don't know what to call this color. Um, color, dark gray. And with the A500 there comes the Amiga colored beige controller. You can't get that by itself, maybe later, but not right now. Okay, so let's put that back in there. By the way, I did, did get this and the mouse uh, for my Mr. Setup, so be interesting to see if that works. So that brings us to the main attraction, which is the A500 Mini. Let me quickly get this out of its protective 
back. And I might actually keep this back, I mean. And well, it shows the A500 Mini. Doesn't have a working keyboard. Worms, Zool, uh, Alien Syndrome, Alien whatever. Controller, mouse, no AC adapter included, which is not a big deal. Says some stuff on the side. Save and resume games. USB firm firmware updates, 720p. Scaling options. And it uses WHD load to get the games on the system, which is interesting. Um, I guess most of us are waiting for the ADF variant of that. So loading ADF files, which might come. Didn't hear some of something official yet. Um, so for me to have a working Amiga 500 means to have a working Amiga 500 with a disk drive. This is nice and good and all, but I would try to make a mod which actually uses the A500 with a disk drive. And Perifactic did that for the C64, the mini version which I have here for size comparison. Um, and he made a disk drive um, which pretty much used the D64 images and the USB disk drive which plugged in here. And then he would, instead of using a USB uh, thumb drive, use the floppy with the file on it, which worked, which is actually nice, but it's not a real C64 with a real C64 disk drive. So, and you might remember, if you're not too new to the channel, that one of my first videos, I guess even my first video back in June of 2021 was actually a video about Rob Smith's um, Amiga floppy bridge, which lets you read and write and use real Amiga disks on a, C60, uh, on a PC emulator like uh, WinUAE. And I was always hoping that this would come to the mister so that I could put a three and a half inch disk drive into my mister and use real Amiga disks. That would be the most awesome thing ever. And I'm hoping to do that with this. Yeah, they have the Cluento license for the workbench and uh, the kickstart, I guess. No, at least the kickstart. Ah, and here we already are. Comes with a nice little protector, which is just some plastic box. Ooh, that's, that, that looks really cute and nice. <laughs> it's a uh, size comparison. It's maybe to the, to the millimeter, the same width. Uh, about, well, I would say the C64 Mini is three quarters of the height of this. It's very flat and even though the button looks like you could press it, you can't. So have the rubber feet, it says the A500. Serial is 38,144. It's five volts, one amp. Yeah, it looks really good. Really like it. And for the port selection, we have USB-C power, power button, HDMI, full size HDMI, and three USBs, which is nice because get a quick start guide, which is in some languages: English, Francais, Italiano. Deutsch, Espanol, and Polski. And it's always, I guess, three or four pages. So not much to see here. But nice that they actually included a printed manual like that. And there's a second layer to this box. And there's the mouse. That's the mouse and accessories. So some more cables. Oh, look, there's actually a beige or skin colored HDMI cable, which I won't use, but it's uh, quite a nice touch. So, but we will use the mouse. And again, we have to peel these. 
I guess. I hope it's not a production fault and uh, these have to stick on. But I don't think so. And let's hope there's at least a USB cable. Not that I don't have one, but it uh, would at least be nice to have a cable. They don't include. Yeah, and here it is. Classic USB C to normal USB 2 cable, also in beige, which is nice. And of course, the beige controller, which looks a little off to me because the uh, um, CD32 controller, which this is based on, has always been. I guess a dark controller, so that looks strange. It, it looks actually yellowed to me. Don't know if you can see that. But it feels exactly the same like the other one. I guess I learned something um, from the C64 Mini where they included a sub, more than subpar joystick, which really sucked and even broke if you played too hard. So that's actually nice. Okay, let's get all the cardboard out of the way and uh, plug it in. So the cables on these are plenty long. So if you're using this with a TV, you have much room to use this from your couch. Same goes for the controller, which also has a very long cable. So the red light turns on. Ah, there we go. the volume a little and let's see we'll use English fifty hertz run television test let's do that do I have to run the test really except settings is why I do oh, and here we are <coughs> So let's check which games we have. We have Alien Breed 3D. Never played it. Alien Breed Special Edition 92. I played that. Another World, real classic. Arcade Pool. 8-year all-terrain racing. Battle Chess, so that's a super classic. Cadaver or Cadaver, however you pronounce that. California Games, classic. Chaos Engine, classic. Dragon's Breath, never heard. F-16 Combat Pilot, yeah, well that looks a bit dated, but still there are people who like their flight sims uh, pixelated, and that is, I guess, one of the better ones. Kick Off 2, that was a real classic. Actually by, I guess, Anko. The Lost Patrol, looks like some war game. Paradroid 90, played Paradroid on the C64 a lot. Pinball Dream, super classic, played that a lot. Project X, I guess I played that. Is that a shooter? Yeah. Quark, may have played it once. The Sentinel, super classic, but I never got into it. Simon the Sorcerer, yeah, I played that from start to finish. Speedball 2, same. Stunt Car Racer, classic, but also never got into it. Supercast 2, yeah, played that. Titus the Fox, and uh, nope. So I played that, but I didn't like it. Worms, well, that was past my Amiga days. And finally, Zool, which I guess was a 1200 game, actually, if I'm not completely mistaken. So it did use the um, AGA chipset. Okay. Yeah, that looks all nice. Let's check out the menu. So we have some display options. Fixed size, moderate, zoom, and screen fit. I guess I'll leave that to screen fit. Enable CRT effect. Let's see what that does. It doesn't look too CRT to me. So you have a menu button here and a home button. And if you press menu, you get to the options. You can navigate along here. So we'll turn scan lines off for now. I like scan lines, but let's just not do this. Power LED. 
I would have thought that the power LED is always on when the Amiga is on, but uh, hmm. I guess I remember that there was some flashing on some demos or stuff like that on the real Amiga. Maybe that is what this option is for. Languages, advanced options, television settings, okay. System info, legal notices. Factory reset, we won't do that. Shut down device. Okay, so. Okay, so I haven't prepared a USB stick or anything like that. This is just uh, the unboxing and uh, taking a quick look at what's inside the box and how this uh, all stacks up. So my first impression, that is a really nice set. Haven't played anything. I'm. Uh, all I did, you saw on camera with this uh, machine. So I really like the aesthetics and the smallness and the idea that the keys are actually pronounced but you can't use them. I would really love for a full-size Amiga 500 or 3000 even. Um, but it is how it is. So yeah, that is nice. It looks good, feels, feels quality. Uh, you may have seen some people open this up and uh, see that there's not much inside except for a huge block of metal to make it a little heavier. So this has some weight to it, but not because it needs to, but because they just screwed in some metal. Yeah, it works out of the box and um, in one of the next videos we will try the games and go into the um, idea of upgrading the firmware putting on other games uh, with WHD load and stuff like that. So maybe let's try one game to close this video. And let's go with Pinball Dreams. Remember that very well. Looks a bit cut off up here. So the flippers are left and right shoulder buttons. Let me quickly check if we can. Okay, if I press menu, I only get the keyboard. So it looks like you can't switch the screen size here. So let's go in here, uh, select display options. And we have screen fit, so that doesn't seem to be right. Let's try this one. Now it's correct. So if you use a screen fit option, which zooms the screen a little, you will actually get some cutoff. Interesting. Okay. Use the D-pad down to actually fire the ball. Oh man. I'm already not good at this. Let's try again. <clears throat> if I remember correctly, you played this with the alt keys on the on the A five hundred. And you get a little cramped here if you try to play it with the shoulder buttons. So it somehow works, but I can totally see that this hurts after a while, at least with my old crampy claws. Okay, so that uh, concludes this video. Uh, I will do some more videos on the A500 because I really like that machine and uh, yeah stick around uh, 
Thanks for watching and until next time. Bye bye. Thank you for watching Retro is the New Black. If you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe. If you like the video, please share. Every like, share, and comment helps a lot. Until next time, bye bye.